Hello everybody. So today I have a video for installing and configuring FreeNAS on VMware Workstation. Now you can basically do the same thing if you're going to be installing this on a physical server. Uh, it would just be you'd have to have some sort of installation media like a USB or a CD drive with the FreeNAS ISO on it. Um, what I'm doing here is we are going to configure a file server using FreeNAS and iSCSI. Um, I'm going to be setting up some Windows failover clustering, but I'll do that in a later video. I will end this video with basically configuring access to the uh, drives that we're going to be configuring. So if you just want a standalone file server, you should be able to do that with following this video. So uh, to get started here, we are going to create a new virtual machine. And I already have the FreeNAS ISO selected. But if you don't, just browse to where you have it stored on your system and select OK or Open. And then we are going to click Next here. And then obviously, if you want to, you can change the location of your uh, VM file. So I have a folder here already created that is empty. And you can name the VM whatever you want. And I'm just going to leave the default for the OS disk. We are going to go in afterwards and add a disk for the storage. You can select Customize Hardware. Um, now, the minimum requirements for a FreeNAS server are a multi-core 64-bit processor, 8 gigabits of RAM, at least one hard drive for the OS. You should also have a separate hard drive for uh, your storage and uh, a network adapter. So I'm going to only give it two gigabits of RAM just because this is my desktop computer and it has 32 gigs, but I'm going to be running multiple VMs at once. So I'm just going to set it to two and uh, I'm going to give multiple processors just two, um, which should be fine for what we're doing here. And uh, that's it. As I said, we're going to come back in afterwards and add a disk because if you do that now, as you can see, the option to add a disk. I uh, might be able to do it with the general ICE or SCSI device, but we will come back. Okay, so have the folder open on another monitor. You can see that the files are all being created. And we are going to click in here and hit enter to start the installation. And hit enter again to install. And as you can see, it's complaining that there is not 8 gigabits of RAM, and we are going to continue anyways. Hit spacebar to uh, select the device, and hit enter again, and proceed with installation. Enter in a password for your root user. Of course. And uh, because it's a VM, I'm just going to do boot via BIOS. If you're installing this on a server you've built at home and it's a consumer motherboard, you can select boot via EFI. Otherwise, if it's a VM or on server legacy or legacy hardware, you can select boot via BIOS. OK, so now that the installation has succeeded, we are going to hit OK here. Select the option to reboot system, hit Control Alt, and then in VMware, click I finished installing. Then you could click back in the window here. So hit Enter to boot into FreeNAS. Okay, so as you can see, we are now at the main screen for FreeNAS. It has picked some random IP address that. Uh, I don't know where it got uh, that from, but uh, what we will do is now configure the network address because I will not actually be able to reach that address. So enter in one to configure network interfaces. And as you can see, there's only the one. So we are going to enter one and select no here. Otherwise, it will just uh, loop you back to the main screen. We will configure or not configure DHCP. We're giving it a static address. Yes, we want to configure IPv4. The interface name is EM0. 
So the IPv4 address I'm going to give it is 192.168.0.109. And this is associated with a DNS address that I've already set on my DNS server. Um, if you don't have a DNS server and you're just doing this at home, just give it a free address on your network. Um, and you might be able to go into your router and make sure that uh, you, your server has a priority for that address so that address does not get assigned to another host at random in your network. Uh, so we can hit OK here and then give the net mask. And mine's just 255, 255, 255, And I'm not going to configure IPv6. So as you can see, now it has the address that I wanted to give it. And uh, I will do the rest of the network configuration like my DNS from the GUI. So once you've done this, uh, you can control alt out of the VM window, open a web browser, and uh, enter in your IP address of the free NAS, and it should pull up the screen. So now enter in root and the password that you set during the installation. And you should now have this screen. So uh, what we will do is go back into the interfaces screen. You can see the interface here. Um, if you want to, you can actually edit it now from the GUI. And I'm going to come in here and change the DNS to match my DNS environment. And if you want, you can also give it some sort of public DNS if you don't have more than one server. And that is pretty much it. So now if we go back to the main dashboard, you can see that it's got uh, my DNS settings. And now to actually get to configuring a file share or file server on the FreeNAS, we will go back to VMware and right click the VM and select settings and we are going to click add a hard disk SCSI create a new virtual disk give it however much space you want I'm just going to give it uh, 100 gigabits for now and as you can see it, it picks up the disk already so we don't actually have to reboot the VM or anything. So we'll go back to the web browser. And before we configure the uh, storage, we're going to go to services, turn on iSCSI, and then check the start automatically box. You can also enable any of the other services that you want. So I'm going to do SSH since I'm sure I'll access this VM um, that way instead of through VMware at some point. Um, so once we've done that, you can go to storage and we should see the disk we've added. So we will go to sharing and select block iSCSI. Um, we're going to leave the target global configuration as just as default. Add a portal. and select your IP address that you've given the VM. Uh, you can leave this stuff as default if you want. Initiators, add. Again, just leave it as default. Authorized access. Uh, might, yeah, I'm not even going to do anything in here. Targets, add. I'm going to call it file server. Portal group ID 1. And going to leave the rest of the information blank. Extents. We're going to add, just going to call this file server as well. We're leaving it as device. And then select the device here or the disk you added for your storage and you can click save associated targets 
add file server, so the tar the extent that we've configured, LUN ID, so you're just going to give an ID of the disks. If you have more than one disk, obviously you'll give them different IDs for each disk. Uh, set the extent to file server. Okay, so uh, now what you'll want to do, if, uh, if you're going to be configuring a cluster failover environment, then that's pretty much it for this video. I will be touching base or doing another video um, for setting up the actual Windows cluster environment. Uh, if you're doing just a standalone server at home, uh, what you'll want to do is open the iSCSI initiator on your system and click the Discovery tab, Discover Portal, and enter the IP address of your FreeNAS and then leave the port as default. So if you come back to the targets tab, it should now show um, the target global configuration name and then the target you've configured shows inactive. So we'll click connect and click okay. So it's now connected. Um, favorite targets will just show the only, only one you've set up. So go to volume and devices and select auto configure. So we now see the disk that we've set up for storage on the FreeNAS. Um, the next thing we'll want to do is go to the partition manager on uh, your system. It'll automatically detect the disk that you've added, so just click OK. And as you can see, it's down here, it's online, so we're going to click on uh, New Simple Volume and just completely format the disk's full size. Um, Okay, so now what you would do on any system that uh, you want to access that same drive is you would just do the iSCSI initiator steps and it should see this uh, drive. You might need to do some permission stuff on the volume so that you could write and read from each system. Uh, another thing you could do is if you wanted to manage this uh, file share from a Windows server, and then access that from other hosts in your environment would be uh, open Windows File Explorer and open the drive, select Properties, go to Sharing. Uh, this is already configured from a previous setup I had done, but uh, what you would do is go to the Sharing tab, Advanced Sharing, and then just check the Share This Folder drive or checkbox and click OK. Click close and the icon for the drive should change. It, it's indicating that it's shared. Um, so what we would do is, let me just pull something to put in here. Oh, I could put all this stuff in there. Now, uh, if you look at the name of the file share, it, it tells you how you would access it. So um, if you don't have DNS in your environment, uh, you would have to either set up a host file entry for the server name or use the IP address. Um, I'm just going to show you from this host. So from the web browser, we would do something like this. So there we go. We could see the files that I've shared on that drive. Um, so you could do this from another host if uh, you use the IP address or had DNS configured, like I said before. So that's pretty much it for this video. We now have a file server configured on FreeNAS using iSCSI. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.